Hello and welcome in today's exciting episode. I am doing my darndest to use up my black fabrics. So I make this vintage style dress and I get it started on another one, but I don't finish it. It's perfect, 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 perfect. Perfect jacket. So at the beginning of this month, which is black and white month, I got out all the black and white fabrics and I put, these are all the black ones with metallic gold um, printed on them. And I put these in a pile and I used up the black and white ones first. And, uh, and then I, and I said, all right, okay, I'll make a maxi dress out of all the black and white ones. Then I'll put these aside and I'll make a black and white, uh, black and gold maxi dress. Now I did the black and white one. Um, the one on the left is the girly Darth Vader. The one on the right is the empire line one. And that's got four black and four different black and white prints in it. And it's a little weird, but I absolutely love the way that that one turned out. Um, it's empire line, so it's not supposed to have a so they are quite different so if I made a black and gold one in um, as a maxi dress or as an empire line dress it would still be quite different to these two but right at the end of this month because next month is yellow and purple so I'm going to have a crossover episode spoiler alert at the end of this month and it's going to be yellow and black so the sunflower fabrics and yeah so i kind of don't want to make an yet another empire line dress i mean i love that pattern but i do think it's fine to do two because in the last one i kind of messed up a few things anyway so not the empire line maybe not the maxi and i just finished um this other sort of vintage style dress that only took less than three yards of fabric so i'm thinking maybe i'll put the spider webs away for halloween and with this star one here, I'll make a vintage sleeveless dress. And with these two, um, actually, I still have another bodice. I have this bodice here and I have uh, I have this weird lame. It's, um, it's kind of metallic, but you can't see it on the screen. Um, it's not filming like it's metallic. Anyway, it's shiny. And um, I remembered when I was making the Zimmerman inspired dress, the middle one, on the left, there's a, um, a layer cake dress. And one of the layers is this metallic fabric. And I just thought it was fabulous. It's just so like quirky and ridiculous. So maybe once I've made my vintage style sleeveless dress out of the gold star black fabric, then I can make myself another black um, maxi dress, but different than those ones because this one's got big puffy sleeves using the lame shiny metallic weird fabric, the gold and black brushed fabric, the gold uh, the black with gold dots and maybe some just plain black fabric as well as obviously that very fabulous bodice with the stars and lines anyway first up i'm going to cut out the bodice and skirt for this vintage style dress Alrighty, so i've just cut them out i use the butterick double six double seven it's kind of my go-to pattern for the bodice and i cropped it because i'm a little bit short-waisted and for the skirt i used one from this dolman sleeve um dress but any vintage skirt i just it's supposed to be two panels for the front and two for the back i just cut it on the fold so it's one big panel for the front one big panel for the back like this one on the left only i've added about three or four inches 10 centimeters so yeah it's slightly longer but not really it's just so that it goes over the knees and i can do a decent size hem rather than just a, a little one so then i sewed those two together just the front and the back panel and i've pinned them to the um the spare mannequin so i will leave this here for now i like it um it's pinned a little differently than how i'm going to pleat it down so it will sit nicer once i'm i've attached it to the bodice because it will be pleated um more evenly rather than just a couple so i'll leave that on the mannequin for now and it is time to get this bodice done so um I, as you can see, the front has no center seam, but the back, I only had a couple of scraps to make it out of. So they do have a center seam. So I'll sew them together. 
Okay, now the left and the right part of the back are one piece. They're sewn together. So now it is time to sew the front and the back together at just the shoulders and also the lining. I'll sew the front and back together at the, at the shoulders. That's it. And then I'll splay them open. So I'll put the right sides together, the outer and the lining bodice together, and I'll pin them around the neckline so that they go together perfectly. And now it is time to stitch them just around the neckline. And then that's done. And the next step is to clip the curves so that when I turn it out the correct way, everything sits nicely. So here we go, that is done and then you can press it at this point and now it is time to do the arms so you just splay it open one side so the left side and then you put the right side in the middle and pin it there and then you take the lining side and the actual bodice and you pin them together at the other edge with the rest in between and like a burrito which is why it's called the burrito method and then you just pin it around the edge and once it's all pinned I pin from the center and then one side and then the other and once it's done then it's time to sew it and once it's sewn then um, the next step is to just trim the down excess. and then clip the curve so that it again it just sits nicely once you pull it out and to pull it out you just tug very carefully on one side and you just pull everything through so you just sort of lift it up and then just just keep pulling all that and pull it through until it's all turned the correct way out and um, it, it can be a little fussy, but if you just go slowly, it's fine. And once that is done, then it is time to do the second shoulder strap. And you just basically do the same thing over again. So you splay out the, um, the shoulder strap. The, so you have the outer and the lining. And then you nestle the other side right in the middle and you pin it in place and then you pull over the lining over the top with the right sides together and then you pin the two the shoulder seams together so that they match perfectly then you pin all the rest of the way around the front and the back and then you machine sew it and Yep, so you machine sew it and then the next step is to just trim it down, trim down the seam allowance so that it sits better when you turn it out and clip the curves. And yeah, it's it's not very much, but it's worth doing. And yep, I've clipped the curves. So now it is again time to just gently tug and pull all of it through and there we go so next step is to just press it you still have to sew the sides together so I do that first so um yep you just pin them all together so the linings and the lining go together and the outer and the outer go together and you just make sure that they're nice and matching at the underarm seam and then you sew them and then you turn the whole thing out so that the outer bodice is on the outside and ta-da the bodice is finished it's such a pretty fabric I do have it in um, a navy and I kind of like that one more but this one is still really cute so now it is time to attach the finished bodice to the skirt and I'm actually kind of like the way it only has two box pleats on each on the front and two box pleats on the back so I might actually do it that way this one on the left is the same pattern but um with this black one with the stars on it I added uh three or four inches so 10 centimeters and I couldn't add it at the bottom because that would have been used up too much fabric because the bottom is too full I added it to the top so the top is um obviously a little bit narrower so yeah I think only two pleats on the front and only two pleats on the back will sort of work better for this slightly narrower shape. Anyway, so I pinned them into place. I sort of divided it into eighths and then pinned them and then did the um, two box pleats in the front, two box pleats in the back. Then I machine sewed, then I reinforced it, so machine sewed it twice. Then to cover the raw seams, you just bring down the bodice lining and turn it over and then you just 
hand stitch that down and here we go it's done it's very cute i really like this dress and now it is time to put it on the mannequin. So this is what it's like without a tie and without the 1950s petticoat underneath. It's just a simple shift dress. And I've got the other previous one on the left mannequin. And you can see that it's a much fuller skirt. So I think... Um, yeah, either you have to, either I'm going to have to buy another at least half yard of fabric or I'm going to have to go with the shorter hemline. I think I'm sort of siding towards the shorter hemline because, yeah, I just like the silhouette of it. The It's not as narrow at the waist and I kind of like that about it. I just put a, this ribbon is from India and um, I just thought it would go well with it. It looks quite cute. And um, yeah, so that's it with the tie on. And it's it's actually quite sweet. I like it. And it's so nice and simple. I really, really like it. And this is what it looks like with a 1950s petticoat underneath. It's just got a beautiful shape and it's not too aggressively vintage. It's sort of just a nice classic silhouette. So yeah, I think it's really pretty and yeah, much more flattering than your average pullover dress. So there's no side zip and it's not, you know, it's not very fitted. I like that about it. I think it's really pretty. So, yeah, and I think the, um, I mean, the print is very garish, sort of, but it's also understated at the same time. I think it's a nice balance. And so these are the leftover bits that I have. So I kind of want to use them all up this month. So we will see. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to use some plain black as well. I was thinking about using this, but if I use the Lame, then that automatically makes it a dry clean only dress. And I'd rather just use up all the cottons. So I think I'll, I've will i got like one strip of this, one strip of the... I went ahead and cut out the cobweb one too, so that I would know how much leftover I have. So yeah, I think I'll... Um, Oh, this is gorgeous. I really like it. So I think I'll sit down, I'll go and have a coffee and I'll work out how much fabric I've got left and then I'll whip up and um, use up all the black leftovers to make one more dress. So I have made a skirt. I decided to go with using up just the black and gold and using up all those bits because there, there were nice clean strips and there were also some scraps. It's a seven layer skirt and I just sewed them all up, pleated it down and here we have it. But um, yeah, I, I like the skirt as a skirt and I like this top as a top, but I do not think they mesh well as a dress because I wear my skirts lower than this, like sort of hanging off my hips. So there'll be sort of a gap in between the two and I like that look I think it's cute I'm not sure I'm <laughs> I think it's something people in the 20s tend to do and I'm <laughs> not sure it's me anymore but I mean what does it matter what other people think this one is one of my first layer cake dresses ever and it was kind of the inspiration for this black and white and gold one so I think uh, and that has sort of different patches of fabric or strips of fabric across the top so I do have these very small bits so I can make one like that sort of like a sleeveless bodice like this one here but in strips of fabric but um I don't know I'm not feeling it I think I'll just leave it as two separates for the moment and then um I've kept all the footage of me making the other one so I'll get to it eventually but I'm happy with where it's at at the moment and I don't want to rush finishing it to wreck it and wreck it so I'm just gonna leave it here for now I already have one finished dress anyway and it's very pretty and I'm very happy with that so thank you very much for watching uh, I hope you enjoyed and um, yeah I used up some of my fabric so tick in the box for that and I think this gun this um stripey one this layer cake one is going to turn out to be nice if I don't rush it so yeah, I think leaving it, just pressing pause on this one is probably a good thing. So yeah, okay, I'm going to go. So thanks again for watching and bye-bye.